All right, hello everyone. Welcome to day tripping Southwest Florida. Today we are in beautiful Cape Coral at Serena Vista Park. It is one of our absolutely favorite parks to visit. Not a ton of amenities. There's some picnic tables and some great fishing spots. But the main reason you come here is for the wildlife, the beautiful views, and just to enjoy the beautiful weather that Southwest Florida has to offer. We've been coming here for a long time. I know the park was dedicated back in 2016, but this area has been used by the locals for a very long time. We've been in Southwest Florida since 1994, and we just absolutely love it. So many great things to do, wildlife to see, and things to enjoy. One of the biggest draws to Serena Vista is first, the great fishing spots. All along the park, there are places where you can throw out a line, catch a snook, redfish, sea trout, you name it. And we do have some local residents here. We have a osprey nest that's been active for years and it's kind of hard to see but over on the other telephone pole there's one of them eating a fish right now and I believe the other one is in the nest I heard her earlier and I think she might have a few eggs which is fantastic but this park it's about eight acres and again just you can't beat the views uh, especially sunset you can come down here set up a chair and catch some of the most beautiful sunsets you're ever going to see in your life it's nice too the walkway every so often has some manatees stamped into the concrete just really 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 nice this park also is very very wheelchair friendly so if you or a loved one is confined to a wheelchair this park definitely provides a fantastic opportunity to get down and see the water um, there's a few little spots where they have the ramps to get down there which I'll take you down here. This used to be a lock where they would try to separate the salt water from, I want to call it fresh, more of the brackish water. And then they figured they, <laughs> it really wasn't needed because when the tides run, um, you know, the water flows through the mangroves and there really isn't much separation. And it really caused a lot of the boaters some heartache because the lock would be down. You had to wait for somebody to open it. But this right here is one of the best fishing spots at the park. And it's also a fantastic spot that you can watch some manatee. Uh, they really enjoy coming up this area when it gets chilly. They try to find some of the more shallow water to warm up. And as you can see, the clarity is pretty good today. Not too bad. But the tide does rip through here. And in turn, it creates some fantastic fishing opportunities. But I've been here before uh, with my daughter. And we saw dozens of manatee going up and down this canal. Uh, but right now the tide is going out. So, if I wasn't filming, I would probably try to cast a line. There's a little blue heron fishing over there. Very cool. Some other bait fish hanging out in the shallows. 
and they're just kind of staying in out of the current but it is an absolutely beautiful spot there's a, a kayak launch here as well um, and what's nice about that is also an ADA compliant kayak launch and they just recently put that in but it is really really nice this section also hooks into the uh, Calusa Blue Way which is a marked paddling trail here in southwest Florida I've been on it in sections over by Lover's Key and near Bunch Beach some other fantastic spots that I hope to uh, introduce you guys to but again this park like if you're looking for some place to get a nice walk in in the morning you know really any time of the day and I'm also looking as I'm walking too because this is one of the parks where people love to hide painted rocks I know a lot of communities around the country do that as well um, our local organization on Facebook is called Cape Coral Rocks and my daughter wife and I like to paint rocks every now and again we like to find them keep on to keep hold on to them for a little while and then hide them again it's just another fun activity to help you know get out of the house enjoy this beautiful weather Today it started off around 46 degrees, which for Southwest Florida is chilly. We are definitely bundled up, no doubt about it. But you can see here too, there's a lovely bench where you can sit and catch the sunset. Ah, very nice. But just absolutely beautiful views. You know, a great way to spend a few hours. You could pack a lunch, sit at one of the picnic tables, and just enjoy this little section of paradise. As we go further down, there's another little spot down here at the point. That is a little bit of a larger area where you could spend a little bit of time. This is where a lot of people fish down here over the bank. Oh, and along with the Ospreys, we also have another resident. There is a very large gopher tortoise, which I won't get too close to his his burrow but he is down in there and it's surprising that he actually has the burrow facing towards the water but we've seen him around this area and if he sees you coming he takes off for there and hides and he'll come out but I can kind of understand why he picked this spot because if you look at the view oh come on it doesn't get much better than that and that is an absolutely perfect spot to watch the southwest Florida sunsets so this area here is what I was talking about and you also see it's got some of that decorative stamping with the manatees But down here over the edge, you can see this whole area is a uh, slow speed, um, minimum wake zone to help protect the manatees. And I'm looking right now and I don't see any coming in or out, but this is a, a great area to, to catch some views of some manatees. And you can see down there, there are some great fishing spots and it just kind of curves around it's just like a nice little 
U-shaped walkway along the water. And you can see across the canal there, there's some homes. that just have some really prime real estate. Love, love, love this area. And that right there is a bat house. So bats would sometimes get a bad rap are actually one of the best things for Southwest Florida in controlling the mosquitoes. It's amazing the amount of mosquitoes that one bat can eat in a night. So there is kind of a push to try to get more bat houses built and put around. In Mat Lache, at the base of the bridge, there's actually a very large bat house. In the park over there, which it is tiny. It's basically just a little fishing spot, but it, it is called Bat House Park. And we're definitely spent some time in Mat Lache. That is an amazing, amazing place. It used to be a commercial fishing community back in the day, but after the net ban, it's really turned into more of a artsy fartsy place. There's some uh, really great galleries there and uh, really, really capture um, some of the uh, beautiful art that's being done in Southwest Florida. And again, I was just looking in those, in those trees there to see if, uh, if I can find some of these colored rocks. No luck so far, but we'll keep looking. And what's nice too is they've got some of these bird houses as well. Um, I have seen woodpeckers actually take over um, some of these. Uh, there was a family of starlings uh, that had one. I think they were originally put up for bluebirds, but the woodpeckers came in and kind of made the holes a little bit bigger so they could fit in there. But it's just fantastic that they're being used. And again, um, it just highlights just the importance of wildlife here in Southwest Florida. You can see how they kind of chipped away at the, at the hole to make it bigger. And then over here, hey look, what's that? Yep, another bat house. So I'm not going to look up in there. I don't want to get no guano on my face. But yeah, you can see. In case you didn't know, that is a bat house. Love it. So up this way, there's two more little offshoots, I guess you would call them. There used to be some beautiful wooden benches that were hand painted um, but they've been removed I think they may be being redone repainted refreshed but they were they were beautiful uh, they had two seats with like a little table in between them but uh, hopefully they come back soon and it's nice along the way there are some informational signs about manatee they are just, uh, when you think of Southwest Florida, manatees are one of the first things that really come to mind. They are gentle giants and they deserve whatever protection we can, we can offer them. But it's amazing that uh, they can eat a thousand pound manatee can eat up to a hundred pounds of vegetation a day. And they spend six to eight hours a day feeding almost as much as me. And then over here, there's a nice little covered area where you could have a 
really nice lunch. I know the people that fish down there where the uh, old lock used to be will come up here and have lunch. And here's one of the other little areas, again, with the, the baby manatee and the mama manatee. Absolutely love that. And this one here talks about the anatomy of a manatee. It's amazing how big they really are. Average manatee is 10 feet long and 1,000 pounds. They are just very, very cool creatures. We also have Manatee Park in Fort Myers where you are guaranteed to see manatee, especially when it gets chilly like this. That is where they congregate because there is a power plant across the street and when they discharge their warm water, it comes right out into a little offshoot of the Orange River and they love it. It's like a, a nice warm spa for them. And here again, yeah, a few weeks back, this is where I saw um, one of the woodpeckers. So I'm not sure if she was nesting or just kind of checking out the spot, but she was kind of hanging on the edge, peeking out at me. And they've done some more planting. Uh, they really try to go with you know, Florida natives, there are some beautiful little wildflowers here. And you can see they're all up through here. And they do help with the erosion. You know, they keep the soil nice and tightly packed. Some good photo opportunities. You can be a butterfly, which is fantastic. And then this here is kind of the crown jewel of the park. It is a little community garden that I believe it is the Serena Vista Friends. It is a little gardening group that comes out here and takes care of it. But tons of Florida natives. I see some plumbago, see some frangipani. But uh, this time of the year, not a ton of stuff is in bloom. But you can see here as well, a nice little identification guide for Lee County uh, butterflies. Really, really a nice area. And this over here is very cool. It is called the Bug Castle. So you see all these little nooks and crannies where bugs can hang out. Just a really, really great idea. Then, when you go over here to the right, there is another little spot. So over here is another great accessible spot if somebody was in a wheelchair it's got a little ramp and a little wooden area where you can uh, again have a, you know a beautiful lunch look out over the water and there's one of those little mini libraries where people Drop off books, kind of that take a book, leave a book kind of thing. But it's nice to see there's always people dropping off books here. Um, and you, I know my daughter has, has gotten a book from here. But it's all hand painted. Beautiful statement right there. It says, our waters and their waters are the same. Care for our planet. The beautiful mermaid and a manatee, and then a mama manatee and a baby. Very nice. But up here you can see there's a nice little table and a bench. You can sit here and 
contemplate life. Beautiful, beautiful spot. We came up here one morning when it was chilly and the end of this little canal right here was filled with manatees. It was just a very, very cool thing to see. One time I saw a huge rat snake down here, big yellow rat snake. And I just kind of sat and watched him until he kind of disappeared over into the, the foliage over there. Um, so this here is a beautiful memorial bench for Mr. Peter. I'm sure he loved this area and all it had to offer and the beautiful view. So I'll take you down here to the right is the kayak launch. And this is pretty, pretty recent. Um, it used to honestly just be a little portion of, I wouldn't call it a beach because it's kind of, kind of rocky. Um, but it's where people used to launch their kayaks and then they ended up putting in the ADA compliant one which is very nice. It also makes it easy for everybody else to get in and out of their kayak. If you've ever done that before, that's the most challenging part, getting in and out. Somebody's got a there you go. So the Great Calusa Blue Way is a fantastic area that has a bunch of different stop off points and access points all along the trail but this is the uh, the Pine Island Sound section of it it is much larger than this so if you are into kayaking or paddle boarding it is a fantastic area to check out what's nice too about here at Serena Vista is the portion of the trail that's here is mostly in the mangroves so if you do have some wind you're really not affected by it. But yeah, when you uh, come down here, this is all new, where they built this uh, kayak launch. I really haven't seen one much better. Most of the time, you just have the, the beach. You just kinda get your kayak and toss it in. Here, you can actually stage all your stuff and you know be safe while you're getting in and getting out. Another one here. It sounds like uh, there's actually a guide that's getting ready to take some people out, which is fantastic. If there's not a, a better way to really enjoy what we have to offer here in Southwest Florida with getting out in a kayak or a paddleboard. Um, you really can't find a much better place to really to really do it so up here is another great little area in this area up here we've actually had lunch before there's two little places where you can <clears throat> hang out it's got really nice picnic tables and uh, Pretty secluded, honestly. Just a really, really... Oh, there's a... I can hear him. I can't see him, but there's a boat heading out. And that takes you right out to uh, Matlache Pass and Pine Island Sound. But up here, they've got the Purple Martin houses, which it looks like they're redoing them right now. But there is a huge colony that will come down 
and spend the winter and spring here in Southwest Florida. Yep, he's getting ready to have a good day heading out there on the water in this flats boat. Heck yeah, can't beat that. Yep, when we used to come down here years ago, there wasn't as much foliage along the canal and you had a really, really great view. Um, but this definitely more natural with the mangroves. There's some sea grape down there. But uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's some little offshoots that go off into the mangroves. And that is part of that uh, kayak trail, which is really, really nice. And here is also what I was talking about with the Purple Martins. So it kind of tells you... <clears throat> about why Purple Martins uh, love it down here. It also talks about um, how you can kind of set up your yard if you wanted to have Purple Martins. Um, it's all about location and the placement of the, of the birdhouses. And this is done by the Purple Martin Conservation Association. And um, it shows you their range, which is really amazing. Um, how they go, you know, all the way from South America, all the way up into Canada, um, and you can see some of the timelines of when they come through. Um, but it, it's really, really amazing. Um, you can see, starting kind of, you know, January is uh, is when we really see a lot of them, and uh, it's all about the, you know, the migration and the reproduction cycles of these birds, and um, you know, it even talks about the biology of them. But you can see each one of those stands holds, oh my gosh, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Looks like they hold about 20 birdhouses each. So you can imagine how many babies they come out of birdhouses when they're there. But they're beautiful when they're there. They're like the big white gourd style birdhouses. And this section here, which kind of looks like a, you know, some empty lots, is actually, it goes all the way up to that yellow house, uh, is part of the park. And there's a couple areas for, if anybody has trash or leftover fishing line, they can recycle it there. But it goes all the way down to that yellow house, and then down over the, the little berm right here, um, you can actually uh, have a bunch of fishing spots along there as well. Um... Oop, here another boat, boat coming in. Oh, that's uh, looks like Sito. Yep, sure is. Somebody must have got uh, stuck somewhere, had some issues somewhere. So that is what this park has to offer. You can imagine how much fun it would be to you know, take your dog for a walk. We have a, a little dog named Emmett. He's a, a Jack Russell Chihuahua mix. And uh, he likes coming up here. He's made a few friends. Yeah, we didn't find any rocks today, but uh, this is one of the areas that they definitely like to hide them. So we'll come back one day and maybe do a, a little video on that. But there's definitely plenty of places to park. And it's never really busy. You know, when I go to a park, I really go there to you know, try to relax and, and spend time with my family. And just really enjoy nature and the beautiful sights that we have along here. There's a, a manatee sign up here I wanted to show you. And these things are, are dotted, you know, all over 
Lee County, Charlotte County, Collier County. And I'll stop here and look across the way there is one of the main access points to get back into the mangroves. Just a very, very cool spot. Please watch for manatees. Operate with care. Again, just as I step over the rocks, just one of the uh, the things about conservation and just how serious they take it here in, in Southwest Florida.